Sometimes, literal adaptations are not the best adaptations. And guru. Whoa! Whoa. Hey! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between the Infinity War movie and comic. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the major discrepancies between the blockbuster Avengers Infinity War movie and the comics upon which it's based. Number 10. The Name It seems a bit confusing, but actually, the film is not based on the 1992 The Infinity War comic written by Jim Starlin. Rather, the bulk of the plot that makes up the blockbuster movie is taken from the Infinity Gauntlet story arc, which was released a year earlier, and also penned by Starlin. The Infinity War comic is quite a different story to the one we've seen play out in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but no doubt it's the better title of the two comics, and likely to draw more butts to the cinema. Number 9. Silver Surfer in the movie, Earth is warned of Thanos' arrival in a slightly different way than the comic, with the Hulk crash-landing into Doctor Strange's sanctum and alerting the world that Thanos is coming. He's coming. Who? This scene is lifted directly from the Infinity Gauntlet comic, with the main difference being that it's the Silver Surfer who crashes into Strange's sanctum and warns of Thanos' arrival, not Hulk. Also in the comic, the Silver Surfer plays a large role in bringing down the Mad Titan alongside the heroes of Earth. Number 8. No Adam Warlock This central figure in the comics is not in the movie, although we do know he's coming to the MCU eventually. I think I shall call him… Adam. Warlock is crucial to the plot of the Infinity Gauntlet comic as he's the holder of the Soul Gem, and is the one to rally the remainder of Earth's forces against Thanos after the Mad Titan kills half the universe's population. So his exclusion from Avengers Infinity War is disappointing, but hopefully we'll see how he fits into the MCU sooner rather than later. Number 7. Roster of Heroes Seeing as the storyline from the comics had to be greatly condensed to fit into a two-and-a-half-hour film, it was no surprise to learn that not all of our favorite superheroes would be included in the cinematic take of the battle against Thanos. Like we've mentioned, Silver Surfer and Adam Warlock were no-shows, but the film also left out She-Hulk, Fire Lord, Nova, Submariner, Cloak, Cyclops, Wolverine, Quasar… well, you get the idea. Granted, the film did bring the Guardians of the Galaxy into the fight to make up for it, so we shouldn't complain. All right, Guardians, don't forget, this might be dangerous, so let's put on our mean faces. Number 6. Stormbreaker Thor's new weapon in the movie has a pretty creative lineage, but it doesn't draw on the comics for inspiration. After his trusty Mjolnir was destroyed by his sister Hela in Thor Ragnarok, Odin's son needed a new flashy weapon for Avengers Infinity War, and he got one in the form of Stormbreaker. But in the comics, Thor never wielded Stormbreaker. In fact, that weapon belonged to Thor's ally Beta Ray Bill, who managed to beat Thor in combat and lift Mjolnir before having his own weapon crafted. In the movie, Stormbreaker looks very different, but we're not complaining since Thor's epic return with his new weapon in hand was jaw-dropping. Number 5. The Endings And then what? I finally rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. After the snap, which we'll get into shortly, the film ends with Thanos' bright, smiling face, his goal of wiping out half of all life in the universe achieved. In the comics, however, the reason he's smiling is because he's happy to be left alone as a farmer after faking his own death. Pretty different, huh? There's no doubt the movie needed a major cliffhanger to keep people interested for what's to come next, and by rolling credits after such a devastating series of events, they have greatly succeeded, while also paying homage to the source material. Number 4. The Black Order Smile, for even in death you have become children of Thanos. 
The Black Order was only introduced years after the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, making their first full appearance in 2013's Prelude to Infinity. And thus, their inclusion in the movie is yet another case of borrowing elements from the larger Marvel Universe. And like a lot of the elements the movie borrowed, The Black Order largely works on the big screen, but its importance was greatly diminished to fit the film's runtime. Thus, a lot of fans were disappointed with the Order's portrayal and minimized role, and hoped to see a much more powerful version of the children of Thanos. Number 3. Gamora's Role Gamora plays a significantly greater role in the movie than she does in Infinity Gauntlet. What's your name? Gamora. In fact, she doesn't make it past the first issue, as she is among the victims of the snap. Thanos' adopted daughter has been a mainstay of the Marvel Cinematic Universe since Guardians of the Galaxy won us over in 2014, so it only makes sense that she gets much more screen time than in the comics, as fans have come to love her character played by Zoe Saldana. Though she is killed by Thanos in the movie, you can expect that she'll still have a role to play in the Avengers 4, since she's listed in the film's credits. Flashback? Time travel? Resurrection? It's too early to tell. What did it cost? Everything. Number 2. The Snap You should have gone for the head. <laughs> Ah, snap! It's THE snap! Yep, that moment when Thanos snaps his fingers and instantly wipes out half the universe. The incident itself is similar in the movie and the comic. Like, how different can snapping fingers be? But in the movie, the snap happens at the end. Oh no. Well done. Whereas in the comic, it's at the beginning. In the Infinity Gauntlet, the snap really sets in motion all the events that'll take place in the Infinity series. But in the movie, it serves to bring everything to a close and leave the film on one hell of a cliffhanger. Though the timing is different, the snap works well in both the comics and the movie. Number 1. Thanos' Motivations with all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. They would all cease to exist, and I call that mercy. In the movie, Thanos' motivations are pretty straightforward. Kill off half the universe's population to prevent running out of resources. In the comic, however, it's a little more complicated than that. Since childhood, Thanos was in love with death. The female embodiment of death, that is. The Mad Titan spends a great deal of his time and energy trying to woo Death, and what better way could there be to win over her heart than by wiping out half of all life in the universe? Honestly, we can't think of any. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.